Whistler. Presented by the United States Air Forces in Europe. I am the Whistler, and I know many things before I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Consecutive year. This program aimed at bettering relations between the command and the host nation groups. And now, the Whistler's strange story Escape to Doom. S.S. Delani moves slowly toward the small, primitive harbor of Kaluka. The passengers stand anxiously along the dock, taking in the picturesque South Pacific Island. It's all there, the blue lagoon blending into the blue mountains. But the enchanting island doesn't capture everyone's eye. No. Something interests Paul Wilson much more, doesn't it, Paul? Yes. She's standing at the rail a few yards away, unaware of your stare. But Jane Gilkey, standing beside you, has noticed your focused attention. Paul. Hmm? That's enough. Enough? Mrs. Diane Kimberly. You haven't taken your eyes off her since we came out on deck. Hmm. Trying to catch her eye. Why? So she'll stop and speak to us. Speak to us? You've had her in a corner chattering all the way from San Pedro. Jane, my sweet, gaining the lovely lady's confidence is the most important part of our groundwork. You enjoy it too much to suit me. I'll be silly. Once I've got her necklace, it'll be just you and me again. I don't like any part of this. When you asked me to stake you to this big deal, I didn't realize it was anything like this. I've never done anything outside the law before. You're not doing anything now. I am. You're merely, merely investing in my business venture. For 50% of a certain $60,000 profit? Forget it, Jane. It'll only take a few more days and we'll be on our way back to the States. Well, you better move fast. I'm practically out of money. It won't take long. I hope not. I'm really fed up watching you romance with Mrs. Diane Kimberly. Well, you just might look forward to your half of that $60,000 we'll get from Mrs. Kimberly's necklace. She's seen us. Oh, goody, goody. She's coming over. Charm, Jane. Yes, darling. Oh, good morning, Mr. Wilson. Hello, Jane. Good morning. Lovely morning, isn't it? Oh, it's perfect. What do you think of Kaluka? I had no idea it would look so primitive. Well, it looks okay to me. Uh, there's quite a few ships anchored in that harbor there, huh? Yes, most of them are naval vessels, aren't they? Quite a few of them. Fleets in, I guess. <laughs> well, I hope the island isn't too crowded. It'll spoil the atmosphere. Are you and your sister staying at the Lorelei House, Mr. Wilson? Yes, we are. Oh, wonderful. Then we'll see you ashore later on. Of course. We'll phone you as soon as we're settled. Then we'll see you later. Bye. 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 Jane, if you're not careful, you'll ruin everything with that nasty disposition of yours. Well, I'd like to throw that dam over this side. Keep your voice down. I know exactly what you're about to say, so just don't bother. Anything you say, mister. Let's go ashore, shall we? <laughs> Ashore on Kaluka, the pattern is nearly the same, isn't it, Paul? Next day, you phone Diane Kimberly and invite both Diane and her aunt to dinner at the Lorelei house. And Diane accepts with apparent pleasure. In the dining room that evening, you and Jane catch your first glimpse of the diamond necklace that you followed halfway across the Pacific. And you notice some other things, too, don't you, Paul? Diane's breathtaking beauty. Her simple, direct manner. Her obvious interest in you. By the time you've had coffee, another thought has entered your mind, hasn't it, Paul? An idea that makes your original plan, the theft of the necklace, seem trivial by comparison. You manage to maneuver things so cleverly 
that a few minutes after dinner, you find yourself alone with Diane on the moonlit hotel terrace. I never imagined anything could be as lovely as this. There's nothing like this in the little towns I've lived in. Little towns? Yes. From Alaska to Uruguay. Oh. Your husband was a traveling man, huh? Of a kind. He always wanted to strike it rich. Even the report of a gold strike drew him like a magnet. After we were married, I went with him, at least to the nearest town. Real grub staker, huh? Oh. And an investor. Practically every penny we could scrape together went into mining stocks. Nearly all of them proved worthless. Oh, that's usually the story, you know. He was killed in an accident three years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. At the time of the accident, we had nothing. I went to live with my Aunt Emily in Longview. We had to take in boarders for a while. But Joe did leave me 5,000 shares in a gold mine in Uruguay. And... It paid off, huh? Yes. Six months later, Joe's mine proved to be one of the richest in the world. It brings in more money every year than Aunt Emily and I could spend in three lifetimes. Paul, I, I think we know each other well enough now to drop the Mrs. Kimberly, don't you? That suits me, Diane. But you don't know very much about me yet. Very little. All I know is you have a sister. Both of you come from San Francisco. And you're both very pleasant company. Well, that isn't enough. So, what do you say? Tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, I'll pick you up and, and we'll explore Kaluka together, huh? The whole island, just the two of us. Oh, it sounds fascinating. very nicely for you, don't they, Paul? Even before Diane Kimberly told you her own story of her heavy mining interests, you were aware she was one of America's wealthiest young women. And you're sure she's more than ordinarily interested in you. That if you're careful, under the tropical skies and magic spell of Kaluka, you might marry her before you leave the island. Next day's trip around the island is followed by dinner and dancing. And three days later, with the help of a well-tipped native bellboy, you arrange for a guide to take you and Diane in a secret trip to a well-hidden spot in the mountains where the two of you are able to view the seldom-seen native religious ceremony. You hear? We stop. We get out now. Oh, listen. And look at that bonfire. Ah, this good place to watch. You stay here. Yes, we'll stay here. Ah, good, good. No trouble, you stay here. I come back soon. Okay? Okay, okay. Remember, I come back soon. Is he leaving us here alone? Oh, we'll be all right. Diane, look, there by the fire. Now, just watch. Very few people get to see this. I think this is known as Te Ura Itirai. I've read the story. You see that native girl dancing? Oh, yes, she's enchanting. Well, if I recall the legend, she represents a girl who was in love with a Polynesian king. The king was in love with her, too, but he couldn't marry her without giving up his throne. So, out of her love for him, the girl threw herself into a volcano. Oh. Watching this, I can believe that legend. I've never seen anything so primitively beautiful. I almost wish I could stay here like this. Always. Like this? Hmm? With me beside you. Well, I... Look at me, Diane. Yes, Paul. Oh, we better call the guy and start back. Why? I love you, 
Diane. Paul, I... Don't say anything. I know I spoke too quickly that... We've only known each other just a little while, but I... How long we've known each other isn't important. But what? Are you sure this isn't just a vacation romance? That it isn't the island, the native drums of music? I'm sure it wasn't, but I... I don't have to say it, Diane. I realize I don't have the right to ask you to marry me. What do you mean? You know what I mean. You've got all the money in the world. I have nothing except... Except the little I earn. I wasn't thinking of money. I have more than enough for both of us. I'd just like to be sure you meant what you said about loving me. Not a child, Diane. Couldn't you tell? Don't you know? I think I do. Yes. I know. I know, darling. Here comes the guide. You uh, see enough ceremony? You uh, ready to go back now? Yes. aren't you, Paul? Ready to start planning your life with Diane. Your only worry is Jane. And you wish now you'd never brought her into the picture, but you're certain you can handle her. As you and Diane return to the Lorelei, and you walk Diane to her bungalow, you're certain the evening with Diane has been the most profitable evening you've ever spent. Good night, Paul. Luncheon tomorrow? No. I promised to spend the day with Aunt Emily at the beach, but I'll meet you for dinner. For sure, no. For sure. Good night, darling. Good night. What a performance. Almost as good as the one you put on for me when you talked me into this deal. What are you doing here? Spying. How long did you expect to string me along? I don't know what you're talking about. I'm talking about that doll from Texas. I've been paying the bills so you could romance her out of her diamond necklace. Keep your voice down. But you got a better idea. Why take the necklace when you can have her and all of her money? Not so loud. But... Why not? I hope she hears me. She should know what a heel you really are. I think I'll tell her anyway. Jane, if you go anywhere near Diane, I'll kill you. Now, for the next few days, you out of sight of both of us. You remember that. I'll remember. Precious. Jane spying on you, seeing you kiss Diane and her angry jealousy was very upsetting, wasn't it, Paul? You decide to avoid her. Until your understanding with Diane is a little more definite. So next morning, after a restless night, you leave the hotel early and spend the day at the beach. And a little after six that evening, you knock on the door of Diane's bungalow. And then smile as you see her coming up the gravel walk. You hurry forward to greet her. Oh, honey, honey, it's been a long day. I thought for a minute you'd forgotten our dinner date. I went over to the main lobby to get some cigarettes. I don't care where you were as long as you're here. You ready to leave? I I, I heard about a swell little spot we I'm go. dining with Aunt Emily, Paul. But last night you said... I said a lot of things last night. Foolish things. I guess the drums and the moon went to my head. But, Diane... There's we... no sense in talking about it, Paul. You see, Jane Gilkey, the lady you call your sister, came to see me this morning. We had quite a talk. Oh, Diane, I can explain. I'm what... afraid not. Jane explained everything very clearly. Especially how you planned to make love to me and steal my necklace. She left this note for you. No? Where is she? 
gone. She took the four o'clock plane home. And now I'm saying goodbye, Paul. And thanks for the little ride. Paul, I'm going home. Even before I saw you with Diane last night, I had decided to call it quits. I've been thinking about it for several days, and now that I'm face to face with it, I cannot bring myself to go through with any part of this deal. In telling Diane, I believe I've done you a favor, too. Hope you can find a way to get back to the States. Jane. Don't worry, baby, I will. It looks like the end, doesn't it, Paul? Any hope of a romance with Diane is over. But you're still not ready to forget your plans for the necklace, are you? And you know you must do something quickly. You leave the hotel grounds and walk rapidly to the beach. You need a little time to think. And when you reach the waterfront, you enter a small cafe, patronized almost exclusively by men of the sea. And you walk straight to the bar. Scotch and water, double. Right. Uh, you mind if this one's on me, friend? Why should you buy me a drink? Well, I just want it, that's all. Let me buy it, then I'll tell you why I want it, okay? Ah, yeah, sure, it's okay. Hey, bartender, make mine the same as my friend here. They're on me, you got it? Got it. Rod. Uh, now I'll tell you why I won't have a drink with you. Because I was supposed to have a drink with my pal, and we had a definite engagement. And he didn't show up, huh? <laughs> That's right, but he had to go to a party. Uh, uh, you know what I did? No, no, you tell me. I thought I... Well, I thought he might be stolen, you see. So what I did, I, I rode out to the panda two miles. Hey, you just got back about 20 minutes ago. The panda? Yeah, yeah, my pal's on the panda. She's a freighter. An old scow has been running between here and Hong Kong. Hey, you ever been to Hong Kong? No, no, I haven't. Here you are, man. Uh, thanks. It, it, uh, take it out of there and, and, and keep the change. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, well, uh, here, here's to you. Uh, here's to you, too. And like I was saying, I row out to the panda and I climb the ladder, go aboard, and you know what? No, oh, what? My pal wasn't stalling at all. Not a soul aboard. Everybody going to a big party. Just, uh, just like... My pal left word with the bartender. Yeah, well, maybe the party will break oh, up early. Oh, no, Jimmy, nice big party last night. The panda's pulling out at four in the morning. Uh, uh you, you say the panda goes to Hong Kong? He's been running between here and Hong Kong for the last ten years. It's pulling out at four in the morning. Yeah, that's uh, what you said. So you rode out to the panda, huh? Why not? You got your own private robot? Oh, no, no, no. I just borrowed one. There's 50 of them along the beach. The natives use them for fishing. How far did you say you rode? The panda, about two miles. You can't miss it. Only about four ships left in the harbor. The, the panda's the furthest. You have to row. It's uh, too far to swim. Oh, yeah. I guess it is. Your uh, pal wasn't there, though, huh? <clears throat> Nobody there. We'll be there till midnight. It's a big party. No, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. Bartender, in the round. Right. No, pal, you've just solved a problem for me. Yes, you're certain you see a solution, aren't you, Paul? You're certain you're going to get the Kimberly necklace, that you'll stop at nothing to get it. Once you have it, you'll row out to the panda and stow away until you're safely out at sea. By then, you're certain the diamond or two in the right hands will get you to Hong Kong where you're sure you could turn the necklace into cash more easily and with less embarrassing inquiry than you could in the United States. And you know you'll never again have the opportunity for almost certain escape that you have now. But first, you have two important details to attend to. You leave the cafe and hurry to the Lorelei Hotel. So you're leaving us too, Mr. Wilson. That's right, checking on. Sorry to see you go. When your sister left yesterday, she said she expected you to stay on for some time. Oh, yes. Well, I did intend to, but an old friend of mine came in unexpectedly yesterday. He wants me to go on a three-week fishing expedition with him. You have my bill ready, man? It's only two days, Mr. Wilson. Your sister paid through Friday, remember? Oh, yes. Uh, so she did. I'd forgotten. Is there a 
an air freight express office here in this building? Uh, not an office, but the porter can take care of anything you want to ship. Uh, right across the lobby. Where do you wish this luggage shipped, Mr. Wilson? The street address? Uh, Paul Wilson. Uh, Crest Hotel, San Francisco Market. Hold till arrival, will you please? Yes, sir. You're certain now that you've erased any possible leads to your getaway, aren't you, Paul? Only one obstacle remains. The transfer of the necklace from Diane to you. And at a little after 11, they're quietly raising the rear window to Diane's darkened bungalow. The moonlight provides enough light for you to make your way to the bedroom, where Diane seems to be sleeping soundly. You reach the dresser, you find the necklace in a leather case. And then as you're about to slip it into your pocket, the sudden light almost blinds you. Stop it, Paul. Diane. <laughs> with a gun. <laughs> it's a habit I got into when I was prospecting with my husband. <laughs> I haven't forgotten how to use it. So you'd better hand me that necklace, Paul. Oh, yes, whatever you say, Diane. Here. Oh, my arm. Not till I get this gun. Oh, you'll never get away with this. Come on. Oh, yeah. Let go of me. Or I'll scream for help. No, you won't, baby. Oh. So long, baby. When you wake up, I'll be on the panda. Bound for Hong Kong. successfully escaped from the island of Kaluga and climbed aboard the Panda. A formation of planes was streaking through the chill upper air with a special mission to perform. Suddenly, the leader dipped his wing. There she is, boys. Follow me at ten-second intervals. Okay, Skipper. On your toes. I'm peeling off now. before we start a target practice? Yeah, I sure did, Skipper. Why? But there's a man on deck waving his arm. Hold your bomb. Not too late, Skipper. I let mine go. Air Forces in Europe present The Whistler. <laughs>